Good afternoon. I'm Okiran Yabwile, and today is November 11, 2024. And on behalf of Studio 242 in the Bay Area Church of Christ, we'd like to wish all of our veterans a happy Veterans Day. And thank you for everything that you have done for this nation. This is the one day out of the year in which we honor our veterans and remember the sacrifices that they have made to secure our freedom, to defend our freedom, and to keep us free. Veterans Day is a national holiday, and I don't think that there is one red-blooded American who will not acknowledge the fact or go out of their way to thank a veteran for his or her service and the sacrifices that they have made on behalf of America and its powerful standing in the world. Today, hundreds of retailers and restaurants, if not thousands, will offer a free meal or a veteran's discount to veterans. People will feel good about themselves this day for the things that they do to remember our veterans. We'll see American flags flown everywhere. Parades will be given. Special programs will be televised and there will be a veterans guest speaker at thousands of events that will take place all across America. But when tomorrow arrives, we will quickly forget, as if it never happened, about the millions of homeless veterans who do not have a place to live and are scattered all across America under our bridges, in our parks, at the bus stations and bus stops, in our prisons, and in plain view of our everyday goings. We will forget about the millions of jobless veterans who cannot secure a job to take care of themselves and their families. We will forget about the millions of mentally ill veterans who are struggling with PTSD, drug addiction, alcohol addiction, and prescribed medication addictions that are preventing them from getting and maintaining a job. We will forget about the staggering number of veterans who are committing suicide and killing themselves each and every day. How is it that we can be so quick to forget what someone has done for us? How is it that we can be so quick to forget the sacrifice that someone has done on our behalf to preserve our freedom? I'll tell you why. It's because we are human beings, simple and plain. We pick and choose what we want to remember when it is convenient for us to remember. We pick and choose what we want to forget when it's convenient for us to forget what we don't want to remember. This is why it's so easy to turn a blind eye to our suffering veterans for the other 364 days of the year. We have a culture in this country that says that if you are struggling with mental illness or alcohol abuse or drug abuse or substance abuse, you're a weak individual who's chosen to live that way and your living situation is your own fault. We have a culture in this country that lacks empathy for people in general and those who are suffering and less fortunate more specifically. Even inside of the military, there still exists a culture that you cannot let your superiors know that you are struggling with mental illness. You cannot let your superiors know that you are struggling with alcohol or prescribed medication addictions. Regardless of what the public affairs narrative is, telling your superiors that you have a weakness is a career ender. Now, I can't speak for the entire army, nor for all the branches of the military, but I will speak directly to the culture that exists inside of the infantry branch in the United States Army. After nearly four decades of service on active duty, I was blessed to retire in January of 2024 as an infantry colonel. But for the last 18 years of my service, I suffered with mental illness, along with suicide ideations, severe PTSD, anxiety, depression, opioid and prescribed medication addiction, and alcohol addiction, all while keeping it hidden from my superiors for nearly two decades. Although I was able to 
successfully hide it from my boss, my peers, and my soldiers. It was my family that bore the brunt of my struggles. When I returned to my home and I took off that mask, and my family saw me from the inside and experienced me through the weakness I was masquerading at work. I knew that the day that I told my boss that I was struggling with either one of these things, my career would have ended in the infantry. So I kept it to myself. I kept the pain from my physical injuries and surgeries and mental injuries hidden as best as I could. I was being prescribed over 15 different types of medications. I was being seen by psychiatrists, psychologists, therapists, TBI professionals, and all types of medical doctors. Pretty soon I turned into Breaking Bad. I began to start mixing my medications with medications that weren't supposed to be mixed. I started mixing medications with my alcohol. When my medication wouldn't work to help me sleep or bring me off the edge, I would then grab a bottle of whiskey and drink until I vomited or passed out just so I could close my eyes for a little while and feel numb. Because of the climate inside of the infantry, I couldn't openly reach out for the help that I drastically needed. And I know that I'm not the only one. I know that there are a lot of people just like me that I've gone through and are still going through the very same things. I can call names and point you to some highly publicized incidents in the Army that speak truth to what I'm saying. But these persons nor their families don't need to relive these moments. Based upon everything that I was going through and still being required to show up every day, combat deployment after combat deployment, and perform at the highest level as a dominant alpha manhunter, it is the only a miracle that I'm still alive today. Now I hope that no one is foolish enough to try and misconstrue my words and turn them into something negative against the Army or the armed forces. America, what you need to understand is that when we as members of the armed forces go to fight and win wars, we do so in such a manner that unless we drop dead and give up the ghost while in stride, no injury, no ailment, no amount of pain is going to stop us from fighting alongside our fellow soldiers and defend one another until we get to that objective and win. Once the objective is secured, then we start the consolidation and reorganization process and begin to treat our wounded and our dead. And then we get ready for the next mission. Those of you who have served honorably in the armed forces and are now veterans, you have reached the objective. You have accomplished the mission that you volunteered for. Now it is time for the organization for America to consolidate and reorganize around you, our veteran, and provide you with the dignity, the respect, and the quality health care that you deserve. Now, I know that there are a lot of individuals and organizations that are doing great things for our veterans in this country. And I am in no way criticizing all of the good work that is being done. I'm simply saying that it is not enough. And each of us as citizens, have a duty to do whatever we can to help our veterans. Now, I want to assure you that I have been and I'm continuing to receive treatment and quality care from the Department of the Army and from the Veterans Administration. But far above and beyond all the care that I'm receiving from the Army and the VA and from the doctors and the specialists and the therapists, none of it compares to the treatment that I am seeking and receiving for the healing of my soul through my faith in Jesus the Christ. It is through my faith in Christ that I sit here before you and I can tell you that I am a recovering alcoholic. It is through my faith in Christ that I can sit here and stand before you and tell you that I am a recovering addict. And although I still struggle with the traumas of war 
and extreme violence. It is through my faith in Christ that I am in the process of healing my mind, my body, and my soul. And this is what we tried to do here at Studio 242. You know I had to plug it in. I'm moving forward into this next mission as a civilian, and I'm humble enough to tell you that the VA and the United States Army have consolidated around me, and they are helping me with this next mission. But make no mistake about it, I know the respect, the care, and the attention that I receive has everything to do with me being a retired colonel. That being said, everyone who has served with honor deserves and merits the same care, the same attention, the same respect that I receive as a veteran. Again, on behalf of Studio 242 and the Bay Area Church of Christ, we wish you a happy Veterans Day and may God bless you and may God continue to bless the men and women who stand too to preserve our freedom. Thank you.